Ah. Boy, I've been busy over this last little while with farm work and association work and family and I have a bunch of conventions I'll be speaking to online and just all this stuff coming together and I haven't this YouTube project is a pretty cool project but it doesn't take priority when I have all these other things in line so about this time of year I just make sure that what I'm doing here doesn't control everything else that I do so when I get busy with a whole bunch of other stuff I start cutting the fat right and YouTube project is some of that fat that is really cool but it doesn't determine everything else that I do so I haven't been making videos over this last little while just because I've been overwhelmed with other things it's much easier to make a video when I'm working bees and I'm the boss and I'm organizing my day and everything's following through as my day is planned and I can find these little moments in time to make these videos but when I'm busy with other aspects of the farm and doing other jobs where I don't have that control, where my day is more so dictated by, you know, collaborating with others on the farm to get the work done or with the association to be able to meet timelines and deadlines and such. I just, you know, train of thought doesn't allow me to provide that ability to make these videos. So. So that is, I've made a promise to myself as I'm making these videos to not allow YouTube to control everything I do. I watch quite a few other farming YouTube videos and I'm, I notice a common theme amongst a lot of these creators is it's really cool to make these videos and connect to people and, you know, provide that content. But after a while, that content starts driving your day and you can start seeing these with these other creators where instead of focusing on they're, they're providing vlogs instead of providing the, the focus on their work throughout their day they're providing their focus on videoing the work throughout their day which I can see is a huge problem unless they're getting compensated a lot for providing that content but my main objective here is and always will be farm work, family, association work, and this video log is to boot, which I have a lot of fun with, which I probably won't stop. And I extract a tremendous amount of value from doing these videos. It's just it doesn't meet top priority as things get really busy. So just got to lay out my mission just to make sure I stay on track and I've got to get to work I'm going to be moving a yard of bees from a farmer's field edge I'm gonna be getting in his way pretty soon he's got corn to take off so I'm gonna move that new nuke yard back to closer to home here set it down maybe get some more feed into them and then provide the bee truck back to carry to allow her to continue providing some open feed to my hives we're just at the tail end of the feeding and the hives are up around that 90-95 pounds per hive, which is good. But we have some very nice weather coming ahead of us. And just, you know, the farm has been following that tone from last year where we just got slammed with terrible weather. And we just got caught off guard a bit. So this year we have experienced one of the best falls for harvest I can ever remember. Nice, except for the bloody wind but it's dry it's warm it's just day after day after day of continuous work allowing us to get all our projects done so with the spirit of last year lingering in my mind i'm going to take advantage of this nice weather and just continue you know trickling a little bit of feed into my colonies just to make sure everything is fed up for winter and it feels good so that's the plan
If I had any concern of these colonies being a bit light, uh, that's completely been relieved. These colonies are heavy. I bet you uh, they'd be 50, 55 pounds, which is surprising to get that much weight into one of these five frame boxes. There's five frames in these little nukes really tight and then the bees to boot. I'm not seeing too many hives that aren't showing bees in the front. Which is good. This yard is looking good. The neighbors are pulling in with their combines and they're just about to harvest this corn so I gotta make sure I get out of their way. Been so busy but haven't been able to pick this yard up because they've been feeding. This one yard is close to a sunflower field and I maybe didn't super them up enough. They kind of plugged out with sunflower honey. So there will be sunflower honey in these boxes which is just fine. But that adds to the overall weight. So I'll set these girls down. I was going to get a little more feed into them, but I don't think I'll worry about that. These hives are set. I'll put them down and settle them in. We're going to be uh, making around with oxalic acid next week with our routine fall treatment. Blast a little bit of vapor into these colonies. It's supposed to be nice weather ahead. So these hives should be loose, the cluster should be loose, which is going to be nice because we can direct the vapor into the, the hive body and it should penetrate that cluster quite effectively. Last time I did washes, I, I'm still yet to see a mite this fall, which only leads to me thinking like I've got to be doing something wrong, I'm not finding mites. But the, if there were mites, I'd be finding them. So my entire, there I get a lot of questions on my management, my treatment management of Varroa mite and I'm very uh, reluctant to talk a lot about that because everything is so very area specific. What I'm doing here doesn't necessarily translate into some, to what people do down in California or even Montana, Illinois or down in New York, you know, there, there's a lot of conditions around that influence the conditions within the hive in which we are targeting to manage these mites. <clears throat> I'll just briefly explain my whole, you know, philosophy behind treating for these mites. So my hives, they're pretty much whipped to the seasons within Manitoba. We have a definite spring, summer, fall, and winter. And when those seasons fall, these bees react almost instantly to that season. The nest within these colonies, just the activity within these hives, they follow suit to our seasons. So as spring comes, they come out of winter, they come out of winter basically broodless, but you know there's just a little bit of winter brood going on there, I'll argue that all day long, but when they come out, there's not a lot of brood. We drop in apivar strips, which is amitraz, into these colonies. At that time, the temperature within uh, the area is warming. 
These bees are fairly active. It's the end of a long winter. Um, we're seeing old bees, which treatments will add stress, but we're also seeing old mites, which treatments should be very effective on knocking off. So we get our strips in as soon as we can in the spring, and it's a 42, 45 day treatment, I think it is. So it's in there for successive brood rounds. And these hives are in development stage and they're very active. So I find that Amitraz is very effective when the bees, you know, mingle around it all the time. Continually, when you get an active development of your hive, you get that cycling, that churning within that nest. And that's what you need is you need that continual contact of the pest to the treatment. So I find the Apivar in my spring uh, hives does a real good job in controlling mites. And it shows because I'm not seeing a whole lot of, well, not seeing any mite pressure right now. But I complement that treatment with a very specific oxalic acid vapor treatment. It's well known that oxalic acid, whichever medium that you want to put it into the colonies, if you administer oxalic acid, it will target and kill mites. So I hinge on that. It's just I have to make sure to be able to treat my colonies when these hives are broodless, because otherwise oxalic acid misses all the bee, all the mites within the the brood cells. So my hive is treated in spring, pretty much cleans up all the mites, um, runs through summer, huge buildup. You know, this is a time where if there's mites in the colony, they're going to be reproducing and developing. Come on to fall, all of a sudden my brood nest starts declining and if there's any type of residual mites within the colony that the treatment didn't get in the spring though the mite counts should be escalating as fall progresses just because of the the huge number of summer bees die off replaced with a smaller amount of uh, fall winter bees so that's when you start seeing mite load express, expressed within your apiary my, I've been finding my spring treatment has been able to get me through fall with low thresholds under 1% is what I'm looking for and as long as my counts are under 1% going through fall then I don't treat in the fall and I rest on a late season oxalic acid vapor treatment where these hives naturally decline in their brood rearing to the point where they're absolutely broodless so there's no brood happening within these colonies anymore because they've absolutely totally set themselves up for winter. They do that just so they can, you know, manage themselves through extreme conditions which we, we see here in Manitoba. These hives don't know it but they're going inside for winter but left outside they need to be able to contract and they need to be able to hunker down and get through this tough condition of winter that comes through because they know it's coming. They can sense it, they can feel it. So they're broodless. So right about this time when they're broodless, all those mites that might be residual within the colonies, we target with oxalic acid. We'll go through, give them one treatment. If we have a higher late season, season mite count, maybe we'll give them two, but we've been finding effectiveness with one uh, oxalic acid treatment, two grams per colony. We administer the oxalic acid, and as I go through and do my monitoring afterwards, I'll see hives which were expressing higher mite counts which I had missed probably in my uh, monitoring or whatever because the mites are dead on the bottom boards. So what that does is just kind of like a mop-up treatment. Whatever the apivar misses the oxalic acid is going to get. So it mops up all those resi residual mites. If there's anything that might be in there still the following year I slapped on another apivar treatment and then proceed with the late season, season oxalic acid uh, vapor treatment again and, and that cycle that double action throughout the year seems to be enough to hold my mite counts at bay you have to realize a strategy like this is implemented because I get away with it because these hives go completely broodless we're basically broodless for five five and a half months in the year so a lot of beehives in the country in the continent are brooding most of the year so you can't get away with just two types of treatments like that but I can because we target very specific conditions and we hinge on very effective treatments and timing that's what it's all about treatment options 
effectiveness and timing of the treatments. So basically that's what I do. Take it with a grain of salt. Look at all those conditions around you and you got to be able to match those up with what you want to happen in here, right? Thank you. 